Nothing of bloomers in the garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. It has been a hot, dry summer, and your landscape shrubs are going to need some TLC before going to bed this winter. We'll tell you what you need to do in our first segment. It's prime time for fruit flies, and we've got a great way to get rid of these annoying pests and fungus gnats, too. Hear all about it during our second segment. Fall is the perfect time to sow grass seed and start a lawn or fill in bare spots. We'll tell you how to have success with seed during our third segment. So what to do if your cat uses your houseplants as a litter box? We've received texts to the hotline discussing just that. Hear more in our fourth segment. (laughs) This Thursday is Johnny Appleseed Day. Johnny Appleseed is a real person or a myth. We'll tell you in our final segment. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small, and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest-free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best-looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, when your shrubs, and for your, that matter, your trees, go through a stressful summer like we just had, it's important to prepare them in fall right for the winter with a little extra care. So what do you do? Well, how, do you, how does your landscape look right now? It looks okay. Yeah? Yeah, nothing. I planted I mean, a couple of trees, and they're, okay. they, they're starting to turn a little early. Oh, yeah? But it's just because we have had the driest oh, weather, I think, gosh. in the last month yeah. than we had all summer. Yeah. And that where a lot of people, when the nights mm-hmm. get cooler and they wake up and there's, like, dew on top of their cars yeah. and, and stuff, they don't think that, it, yeah. oh, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But we haven't had a significant rain for a while. A long time, yeah. Yeah. And and my that, Franklinia tree is dropping a lot of leaves. Yeah. 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 And and I planted a Franklinia too. Did you? And that looks pretty good. Oh. But I planted a Zelkova and okay. it's starting to get that yellowy look. Oh, yeah. And as we sit here in the studios in Philadelphia, we look outside and we see the city, but 
we're in somewhat of a, there's lots of trees in this area. And you can see where the colors are starting to change. They're not that lustrous green anymore. And if you look around your neighborhood, you're going to notice that trees are starting to turn color. And that we're going to have a segment next week that's going to talk about what causes the trees to turn color. But I can tell you what's happening with these because you can see it's almost like a tinge of yellow. That's the dryness. And that, that's the one thing you kind of be worried about. You need to supplement water. Um, it's important even on established plants. Like uh, coming up in the studios again, they have planters. Did you notice how dry the planters yeah, are? really dry. I noticed how yeah. dry mine are at yeah, home. <laughs> My sweet potato vine yeah, is yeah. Uh, shriveling. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to water them extra, extra heavy yeah. just to get them to perk back up and to get all the flowers back, uh, back flowering because – Again, just because it's uh, it's going to be the the fall, they still need to get supplemental water. I mean, it's going to be 85 degrees in the fall. Oh, so crazy. not for long. Let's hope we get those 70-degree days and those 55-degree nights. Yeah. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. <laughs> but here's one thing to do to your landscape shrubs. And this is good for all evergreen shrubs, all types of Um, rhododendrons, azaleas, all different types of of landscape shrubs. Put down holly tone and feed them holly tone. It's it's by Espoma. Espoma holly tone is a granular fertilizer, 100% organic. Uh, It contains uh, mycorrhiza, which is going to be make sure that the elements in the soil can, can help that fertilizer to work into the plant. And holly tone on All of your trees and shrubs, Um, there is tree tone, by the way, with tree tone tone. for just like shade trees and and flowering trees. But honestly, holly tone is something that has a little bit of something that will be a little more acidic. Like all of your Japanese maples, dogwoods, they will absolutely love holly tone. But don't skimp. Don't not do it. You do it now and then you do it. In the spring. So you're going to do it in March. Uh, Really, the end of March would be the best time. And it's going to work to help your plant's root system to grow. Another thing, what about mulching, Julio? Yeah, make sure you have mulch down uh, at least two to three inches. Right. So you're going to replenish. You're going to replenish that that you... If you did it in the spring or if you didn't, you know, now's the time. Yeah. And and again, even if you did it in the spring, it's going to be compacted. It's not going to be, it's a lot of it rots away. Um, speaking of rotting mulch, <laughs> rotting mulch, I got a picture from my son-in-law, Steve. Hey, Steve, you listening? <laughs> You've been killing it on your lawn. Um, oh, wow. He's been doing a lot of work on his yard. Oh, yeah? Nice. and. Uh, he came out and looked at his mulch bed, and there is what he thought was dog throw up. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> his, and it, it's actually a type of mushroom, if you will, uh, that it looks like vomit. Ooh. Yeah. I've seen Doesn't that, that sound nice? Yeah, it's real nice. <laughs> you know, we don't have to give him more. This yeah, is yeah. radio or podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> again, <laughs> it is one of those things yeah. where it is a natural occurring thing as things break down. Yeah. Um, as things break down in the organic matter, it throws up this spore and that it looks like, it's like, what is it? It looks like something, you know, again, if you've got a dog, you know what it, it looks like. Yeah, it um, look like that. but, uh, again, it's not something to worry about, but again, putting the mulch down adds that organic matter so that the soil, because it's a soil, you don't want to dry out. You want it to say moist, not wet. Um, and again, you don't want it to get to that critical stage to where it's it's in a drought zone. So again, get that mulch down. Um, you need to spray a systemic insecticide on all of your plants. Now, a systemic, like we've anybody who's listened to this show for any amount of time knows, a systemic is makes the plant poisonous to the insect. And what happens is that on all types, it could be spider mites. It could be uh, different types of lace bug. Lace bug is a, is a bane to, to the existence of azaleas and rhododendrons and Andromeda. Oh, my gosh, Andromeda. That's like, yeah. you know, it's like candy yeah. to them. And that these insects make the plant so that it can't 
get the maximum photosynthesis out of the sun because it's sucking the life out of the leaves. So you want to spray with a systemic insecticide and just do your entire landscape plants, okay? Do all of your shrubs or in any of your perennials. This is going to, um, it, by the way, it is not organic. Sorry, folks out there. Not every time there's going to be an organic that is going to have as complete a label as the systemic. So again, you're going to want to spray them to control the lace bug so that you don't have to deal with it in the spring. And a systemic broad spectrum of insects, also long lasting. If you want to go organic, you've got to spray three, four, four times. times. Yeah. And if you're, yes. if you don't think that the, the organic insecticides are, Oh, I'm going to use organic because it won't kill the bees. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is spray in the the late part of the day when the bees are back inside. And I don't care whether it's organic or inorganic. Do that spray late in the day. Normally, we always tell you, it's like, oh, do it first thing in the morning. Don't, you don't want it wet. But when you're spraying, because the safety of the honeybees You want to do it so that it's late in the day, and that's when the bees have basically gone home for the night. They're done. All right. Uh, When probably about two weeks after that, you want to use what's called a dormant oil spray. And Julia, what what is? Can you explain to me what a dormant oil spray is? It's like a um, what it does. It protects the the uh, gives like a film. Right, and it protects the plant from the insects, and um, that's what that basically does. Yep, and it's organic. That is that is one that is organic, and like Holly was saying, it creates a film and and it coats the insect and kills any adults that are on it as a contact spray. And it's one of those things that you want to make sure that you spray the leaves and under the leaves and along the trunk. Because there's scale. Scale is, a, is an oh, awful insect. You, some, you can't see them sometimes because they're just attached like barnacles to the trunk. And that what it will do is it will smother them and control them that way. It doesn't necessarily poison them, but it gives them that coating of that film, which will kill the insect. And that you do a combination of the these two because, again, you have a systemic. You put the systemic on. It, it makes the plant poisonous to the insect, which lasts for a long time. But there are sometimes there are eggs where when the systemic begins to wear off that you don't know, you don't realize that the eggs have hatched and now you have a whole new generation that needs to be controlled. And that way, you do it probably a month after. Do it a month after you put down the systemic. Maybe after, like if you have deciduous shrubs, like say, for instance, you have, oh, I don't know, let's say spirea or you have even hydrangeas. And once those leaves all fall off, go ahead and do it then because then you'll get good control. And Julio, should you just leave those leaves sitting in the bed? No, you you rake them up and get rid of them. Yep, because they could have disease Disease spores spores. in it. And that's how you have one thing. Every year I have the The same same thing. thing. Yeah. And it's because sometimes you may be leaving those leaves there. That's right. All right. Here's a test for Julio. Can you name or can you tell me what an anti-transparent is? Anti-transparent means that, you know, the the, uh, lets lets the uh, water go through, you know, out into the air. But this this will give it a film which stops it from, uh, from doing that. So the plant now is basically, you know, not losing water through its leaves, and right. not drying up. Right. Um, plants like boxwood and a lot of of our broad-leafed plants that, and even evergreens, they sometimes get winter burn. And winter's cold. If we go through a dry winter with lots of wind, all the evaporation and the transpiration that comes out of that plant is not replaced. And like Julio said, that it that it's like a film. And there are brands out there, there called Wilt Stop is one. Wilt Proof is another. And that it's a flexible film that you put on plants and it just stops them from drying out. 
Uh, it's great for transplanting. When you, if you're doing any planting, mm-hmm. make sure you do it because it will help those plants' roots grow rather than all of a sudden that moisture that's supposed to be around the roots evaporates and transpirates through the leaves and they, that will help them to transplant better. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's great. You, oh, yeah, it's great. And again, you want to spray it in late fall when the temperature is above freezing, folks, okay? There are certain plants, read the label, it has to be above freezing because you can really mess up your plants if you do it below freezing. Yeah. So it can be done late, but you have to apply it when the temperatures are above freezing. Yeah. Especially, like, I have a lot of boxwoods. Yeah, and they're you know they sit outside and the, uh, where there's really a lot of wind. Every year I hit them and I have no issues at all. No issues because a lot of times we get it in in early spring. People come in, it's like what's going on because the plant will be all white. White, yeah, and and it's basically a burn. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's something that that it's not done enough, and it can even be done uh, in yeah. almost any time, time of the year. Yeah. You know what I saw it for? What? Used scrape for what? Coating pumpkins. Oh, yeah. Because wow. what happens when pumpkins rot, right? They, they, they're losing or they yeah. shrivel up. Mm-hmm. That if you coat them with the wilt stop or wilt proof, that it prevents them from drying out wow. and that they, they keep their skin and they look great. Mm-hmm. Um, and even is used as a leaf shine for house plants. Oh, yeah. So you can use it in, inside. It's got lots and lots, lots of, uses. of uses. Overlooked, underused uh, product mm-hmm. for sure. Wow. For sure. Listen, if you've got any questions about what to do with putting your, it's basically, it's like your pool, you know, you got to close yeah, your pool, you got to close your landscape, landscape. you know, you got to <laughs> do the same type of thing. And it would only take a, an afternoon. It's not going to take a lot of time to do. It's something that's easy, but uh, you just need to do it. Mm-hmm. You just need to do it. It's something we don't think about. No, no. Yeah. If you've got questions about that, make sure you call the hotline. That's 609-685-1880. Well, I'm going to get another call about talking too fast, aren't I, Aaron? All right. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the Internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced all-in-one rose and flower care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Hey, welcome back. I wanted to give uh, Richfield Farms uh, a plug. Uh, Richfield Farms is up in Clifton, New Jersey. That's probably about, I don't know, five, ten miles outside of New York City. They have a harvest fest each year, and it is so much fun. It, it This year it's on uh, Sunday, October 6th, uh, between 11 and 4 they have animal shows. They have lots of fall decor and a petting zoo. Uh, they have farm to table foods. They they're having a you know the big green egg the the, the yeah. I don't know if it's a grill or oven or whatever. I, I know what it is. Uh, and they're having pony rides. 
And they're having uh, actually a special guest, the Benjamins, performing music. So oh, wow. they've got it all. They've got music. They have food. They have just a great atmosphere. <laughs> you know, Richfield Farms, and that's 1139 Van Houten Avenue in Clifton, not Clinton, Clifton, New Jersey. That's right next to Patterson. That's next to Garfield. That's right wow. near Bloomfield, near Montclair. Mm-hmm. Aaron, you know where Montclair is, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I see you over there with your Met shirt on. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Julia, what do we got going on? Oh, yes. Uh, little specks flying around your bananas. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> little gnats hovering around your houseplants. It's the season of the grapes. The Land. season of the grapes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Every year I have to tell the story. Uh-huh. This time of the year, right. uh, I was at a restaurant and there are fruit flies at the restaurant. And this is a fancy, this was a, a nice restaurant. It wasn't a, you know, you know, whatever. The waiter, you know, oh, don't worry. It's the season of the grapes. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to eat fruit flies. <laughs> okay, I really don't. <laughs> Especially because I'm paying for, you know, veal Oscar and I don't want to be eating <laughs> fruit flies with it. Um <laughs> Anyway, yeah, fruit yeah. flies are not fungus gnats. Two different things. Two different fruit flies are the thing that's flying around your fruit. Mm. Okay, fungus gnats are the things that are flying in your plant mm. soil. Two different insects altogether. Mm. Fruit flies are actually related to the common house fly. I, mm. they, I, I've done done a lot of research, and Julio, I noticed that you brought a banana today. I did. You know that sometimes they don't come from your house, even though it appears that they came from your house. Uh There's eggs on that banana that hatch while they're at your house. Uh And then all of a sudden, (laughs) guess what? You got fruit flies. You got fruit fruit (laughs) flies. Uh See, adult fruit flies can can live to, gosh, they can live 50 days. Wow. 50 days. Um, And and eggs, let's just see. Let's just say they're prolific. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And that uh, again, uh, I then they feed right away. That, so one female fruit fly can lay as many as you ready for this. I know you're sitting down. Five hundred eggs. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Wash your fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Wash your fruit. I don't know. A little protein. Um, but as much as five hundred days over their lifespan, and again, that's for forty or fifty days. And they're going to want to, like, you'll see them. I mean, they, they are in, it's no matter how hard the groceries store tries. I mean, you know, back at the family farm, we used to put fans up oh, okay. to try to just deter them, them from hanging around. Mm-hmm. And, good way. and a lot of people say, oh, I put vinegar out. Vinegar. Yeah. Yeah, that that attracts them. That's perfect. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know yes, it, it makes them pass out in there. And sometimes it you feel like you're doing a good thing. But uh, the thing is, is trying to make sure that you're keeping that area clean. Um, and that, <laughs> they'll breed in your drains. So make sure that, just make sure that you're, you're cleaning often. Okay. Um and it's, it's fruit flies only need fermenting fruit or a moist film of organic material to breed and thrive. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Lots of research done on fruit flies. Yeah. And, and this is weird. I'm never going to look at you the same again, Julio. Human. Uh, humans yeah. share 75% of the genes which cause disease with fruit flies. Wow. How about that? Right. That's incredible. It is. <laughs> you start that. buzzing on the way home. <laughs> You'll know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to open I'm going to roll down the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you do? You've got fruit flies. And I said, don't do the whole trick with the, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. Fruit fly traps, right, Hole? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they're the best. Are, are non-toxic, yeah. right? They're food-based liquid to lure fruit flies inside. It looks like a little apple. And once they go in the trap, they can't get out. Get out. They're done. Um, that's right. So they're not going to breed anymore. And that they last for about a month. 
And that you'll be surprised that all of a sudden they're attracted into that apple. They get stuck in there. They can't get out. You're not going to hear them buzz yeah. like the movie The Fly. Have <laughs> you seen The Fly? <laughs> yeah, I see that one. Yeah. yeah, so they're not, you're not going to hear them. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, but, but again, they're not going to get out. And look... It happens to all of us. I know that I've had fruit fly issues and I've used that that little apple trap and it works perfect. I've tried to do like a hybrid of the, the vinegar and I put soapy water and it. Gosh. All it did is made more cum. Uh, <laughs> now, what, all right, so the difference <laughs> between a fungus gnat, which is on the soil, which a lot of pl- house plant owners have problems with, um, Aaron, do you do you have any issues with your with fungus gnats at home? Not really. No, yeah. no, nope. no. Nope. Yeah, you're just saying that because you know. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's no, always I, clean. I don't <laughs> have any issues with fungus gnat. Yeah. I know you had all the other point. Oh yeah, sure. There's yeah, plenty. Tree. I, I, I spray. You spray? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. All right. It's like yeah. I'm an informed gardener, man. Come on. <laughs> That's Give right. me some credit. Yeah. Give me some credit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you got to do? I mean. First of all, the fungus gnat larvae, usually in, in the first couple inches of the growing medium, um, and if and at, if you have your plants on the moist side, they're going to be feeding on the fungi, the algae, and, the, and again, decaying organic matter, um, even like the plant's roots and stuff, that they're going to be eating in there. Uh, and that they'll go and they will pupate on the soil, not on the plant. Now, um, I recently found something out I was all excited about. I keep saying how New Jersey has outlawed imidacloprid. Mm. They did not on houseplant because the percentage use on houseplant uh, for imidacloprid is low and that they're allowing it to be used. And it so it is perfect for controlling fungus gnats. I have heard all kinds of ways that people try to do it, but it doesn't really work. Um, Because, again, fungus gnats, like all of the insects that we ever talk about on these shows, they have first its eggs, then they they become the immature, then become adults, then they they breed, then there's eggs, then because it's a it's a whole cycle, you know the 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 what the circle circle of of life. life. Yeah, yeah, I've seen Lion King, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so. What happens is that they, they, you may kill the adults and you think that they're gone and you go and you, you know, kick back and say, ah, I yeah. finished my problem. But no, they come right back because you didn't control the eggs. Using the houseplant imidacloprid uh, granules will keep that so that it will have a longer residual. So, so that's my best result for fungus gnats. Um, fungus gnats are not good flyers. Uh, they kind of like bump into things and, and they're more like, you know, they only fly for short distances. So it's not like they're, they're flying, flying all over. Now, fruit flies, on the other hand, you they know, they, they are yeah. very good flyers, yeah. but fungus gnats, it's not, yeah. remember, they're Oops. different, they're different things where that people get mixed up all the time. They're only alive for like seven to 10 days, but... The ladies can lay up to 200 eggs um, and cracks and crevices of the growing media. And then it, if it contains, like most potting soils have a lot of peat moss in it, and they, that's something they're attracted to because it does hold uh, moisture. Room temperature, that's the other thing. It's like the indoors is perfect for growing fungus gnats because 65 to 75 degrees, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, it it's perfect. Continual reproduction. And it's really more of a nuisance. They're not going to hurt your plants, but they're going to, you know, they're going to make your feel like you know, <laughs> your plants aren't being taken care of. And, you know, it's just, again, it it's the decreased day length, too. Has anybody noticed that the, oh. the days are shorter? Oh, yeah. I have. Oh, yeah, sure. I have. Yeah. Like in the morning, it's oh, like, morning. it's like, it's like, instead of a night bright morning, it's like, it's just Light. getting light now. Yeah. You know, so, and at nighttime too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, they like that. They like that. Try to do this. Try to make sure that, that, that your soil is drying out. Use the systemic imidacloprid. 
um, type of insecticide, which is a systemic granular insecticide for houseplants. You want to spray. If you want to spray, you can use a pyrethroid-based insect, which is, you know, one of our thrins that we talk about all the time, bifenthrin, sefluthrin, permethrin, uh, any of those will work. Um, which we advertise constantly because we love it so much, is a triple action by Fertilome and VPG that that is a great product because it will control other insects that happen to be on your houseplant. And it has both neem oil as well as a pyrethrin, uh, permethrin, uh, or pyrethrin rather. Again, it's going to, you need to do it this way. And, you know, somebody asked me, he's like, can you use carnivorous plants? <laughs> Yeah, but they're not going to be very effective. Right. If I were to choose one, it would be the sundew plant, which acts like sticky flypaper. Mm. And and it attracts it to it. And pitcher plants will kind of do the same right. thing. Uh, it's a fun type of thing to do, but not a very effective thing to do. And that also, it could be that they're creating a circular effect where the plants like to be in moist soil, therefore that the, they lay the eggs and then they hatch and then they come up and then they eat them and then they find, you know. Yeah. So it's not necessarily going to solve your problem. Right. Imidacloprid is the best way to go. Right. Um, and again, that's systemic granulars, granular for insects, uh, for insect uh, and house plants. Um, that's what you're going to, that's what's going to work. Um, fruit flies, you got to use traps yes. for Fungus gnats, you need to use a type of insecticide and, again, imidacloprid or one of the Thrin sprays will work best. If you've got questions, you know what to do. You call the hotline. That number is 609-685-1880. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. Dot com And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 AM to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. On Sunday at 8 AM, we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, it's seeding time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell you what, cool temperatures, naturally rainy season. Let's get grown grass. How about it? 
Why is why do we call this lasagna method? Lasagna. Let's use the lasagna method. Yeah. I, I had a, I had a customer this morning before we came in the studio. He's growing. He wants to grow grass. Had his little area. Uh, is going to till it all. And that the key is is that if you want to do bare soil or you want to do bare spots, you're going to have to get the seed in contact with the soil. And I'm not talking throwing down an artificial layer of like topsoil and putting it on that, which happens to be on a thatch layer, which is going to sprout seed and then dry out. And boy, that seed doesn't work. Um, You have to get it into their natural soil first. So let's, let's talk lasagna. Now that's Italian. It's Italian. <laughs> oh, it is. Italian. God, I have, haven't had good lasagna in a while. Yeah. I'm hungry. Anyway, <laughs> first, you have your natural soil level. And if you're doing a full bare spot, air, like not a bare spot, but a full area, like if you're doing a 10 by 10 piece of, of soil, you can add bumper crop into the soil, mix it in, turn it over and and get it in there. Remember, it's your only chance you might be able to get that done. So uh, I encourage you to make sure that you do that. So you have to get the seed in contact with the soil. So whether it's bare spots or whether it is a, a big open area, you need to make sure that you have the, the soil somewhat loosened and not put it on the thatch or put it on... Yeah. Hard, I, hard soil. Right. I mean, there are areas in our listening area where they've got clay. Yeah. And all right, Julio, another question. <clears throat> Will Julio get this right? I know. I want to bet, Aaron? I, I don't know. I don't think he's going to. Okay. okay. <laughs> what, if you plant grass seed, what sprouts first? The, the leaf or the root? The root. Very good. Yeah, I would have lost. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing is that when a seed germinates, it sends a little root hair out. If that root hair like just is in the air, <laughs> it'll dry out and it'll die. So it won't have that sustenance that it needs, the moisture that it needs, the contact of the soil to anchor in that it needs if you're just doing it over the soil. Now, granted, if you're overseeding your lawn – When you're just throwing grass seed around on top of your lawn, hoping that it works into the to the soil level, your percentages of success is going to be limited. But it's a heck of a lot easier than trying to till it all over and and get it in there. If you do a thatch, you got to make sure all that thatch is picked up and then you can put the soil on. But again, it's the lasagna method. You have to get seed in contact with the soil. And that what we're primarily talking about is open areas where you're doing a large area of reseeding, whether it's a whole lawn, whether it's a larger patch, or you're doing it in bare spots. So you get down to your regular soil line. You go ahead and put the seed down. Then you lasagna it on top with with the seed and more soil. Now you're going to use something like a cover, like bumper crop is what we recommend. If your bumper crop is... Is better than so, than topsoil, just simply because it has more moisture holding ca- uh, capacity. It has lots of great um, elements from bat guano to worm castings to you name it. It's got everything, everything. but the kitchen sink that will add elements and nurture the seed that it can't get from just a bag of fertilizer. So it adds more to it. So, again, soil, seed, soil. Soil, seed, soil. Also putting soil on top of the seed will hide it from the birds because you don't want uh, grass seeds a little expensive to be feeding to the birds. So you want to cover it up and, and bumper crop is what we recommend. Then, last but not least, you want to apply fertilizer, a granular fertilizer. And look, whether it's your whole lawn and you don't do any seeding or if you're just doing seeding in a small spot or a big spot, the analysis on the fall fertilizer bags are almost identical to starter fertilizers. 
Uh, there was a $5 difference today in the cost of your regular fall fertilizer versus your starter fertilizer. And that I suggested to the customer, hey, save the five bucks and go ahead and put down just a regular fall fertilizer. And then that way you're getting the elements that you need for everywhere. So again, it's soil seed, soil fertilizer and then one thing that people say oh but hey i'm walking on my new seed that's okay you're compressing it down and you're you're pushing it down so that it's getting in good seed soil contact and then remember when you water you got to keep it moist but not wet you water it to the point you don't want it to run off and all of a sudden go down the the storm drain you want to keep it moist but not wet. So don't completely saturate it to where water is running off your lawn, but you want to keep it moist. So you're, you're going to have to do that because like Cooley and I talked about just a bit ago, if that seed germinates, sends out a root hair, and that root hair dries out, it's going to die. So you need to keep that soil moist so it sends out that root hair where it finds its way into the soil and then goes out. Anything to add, Julio? As far as the watering goes, Len, uh, you know, um that's a that's critical right there because you know, a lot critical. of people don't you know don't see that part of it. No, nope. um, they they need to make sure that they don't overwater or underwater. Well, it's again it's it's with seed. You know, I would almost favor, favor overwatering over than underwatering because underwatering it kills everything. Mm. So again, make sure that you're getting it moist, not wet. You don't want it to the point of runoff. Um, we're given a helping hand by the natural fall rainy season. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? We get another rainy season in the spring to help it to, to finish out. Um, again, do not put any weed, weed controls or weed and feed. You can't do that. So just keep water, regular fall fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You'll be made in the shade. As long as you plant shade seed. That's right. right. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertile Loam's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertile Loam's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. Fall is for planting. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. 
Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We received a text on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Here's the text. <laughs> what a text it was. Yep. Hey, thanks for feeling my question. I have two, both related to a Monstera I've had for about eight years. One is that my cat keeps peeing in it. I've been able to stop her by putting aluminum foil on the top of the soil, and I've rinsed it out thoroughly in the shower, but will the cat pee residue harm the plant, and should I repot it? Easy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you need to get that urine out of there because it's over-fertilizing the root system. Uh, most, if you've ever thought about this, like a high nitrogen fertilizer has urea in it. And urea is, sounds a lot like urine. Uh, so, again, the cat needs to uh, get out of there. Um, and the cat's going to return unless you move, remove as much soil as you can and repot it with fresh potting soil in a new pot. Cat, I have two cats, so I know. I know. I know. I know. The <laughs> aluminum foil idea sounds great. Um, but replace it with a fresh uh, piece of aluminum foil. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the other part of her uh, text message. Uh, the other is a friend gave me this plant as a cutting with two leaves. It's grown consistently since then, and I've been able to split it to multiple pots and give it to friends and family, uh, give them cuttings, but I hardly ever get split leaves. The new growth is mostly small and unsplit, and they're cute, but not the classic Monstera shape and size. Any clue to how to help it? Is this an indication that it's not healthy? Is it the cat pee? Oh, yeah. Right here. All right. <laughs> Monstera. We used to call them philodendrons back in the day, and they are a type of philodendron. And there's lots of philodendrons. Like, for instance, Monstera. I can remember first hearing, what, Monstera? What's a Monstera? And it's like, oh, it's a philodendron. Uh and that the thing is, is that there are lots of types of philodendrons. Um, like, for instance, the Swiss cheese plant has lots of holes in it. And it's a Swiss cheese monstera. And that that looks that way. And then there's other varieties of monstera. I think it's just a variety of monstera that does not have a lot of splits in it. And it sometimes can happen when it gets older. Remember the variegated monstera, Julio? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that I found that that reverts to green. Again. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, it's it's one of those those. All right, my son Carl bought a cutting for two hundred dollars, and it was a variegated monstera. It was supposed to be the hottest plant right after COVID. You and I voted it as the best new plant at the Tropical Plant Show, uh, and that what happened was that it reverted to green. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're not supposed to do that, but <laughs> cuttings did. usually yeah. stay uh, with the the cutting variety from the original host plant. And that all I can tell you is that, hey, if it's green and it looks good and it's growing good, that's it. No peas yeah, problem. Peas <laughs> that's not a pea problem. Not a pea it's problem. not a variety. It's just a varietal coming. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Spring is here. And people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. BioAdvanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. <gasps> That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. I can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. 
Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, oh. is Johnny Appleseed a real person or is he a myth? Oh, <laughs> good crutch. Oh, come on, Julio. I think he's real. You think he's real? And you would be correct. You would be correct. That again, it's, uh, I, he's actually, it's his 250th birthday. Ooh, wow. He's not alive anymore. Yeah. But 250th <laughs> birthday as of Thursday, September 26th. I mean, it, it's amazing that, so he was born in Massachusetts uh, in 1774. And it's, uh, it's amazing his story. He became, uh, well, first of all, his dad uh, was a Revolutionary War hero and served with George Washington. Uh, and that his mother actually passed away right after the Declaration of Independence was signed. And he remarried after the war and he had 10 children. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> so here's John and his half brother, Nathaniel Jr. He, they journeyed west, uh, started, I guess it was 1792. And they lived as vagabonds, they lived off the land. Yeah. I mean, you think about this, right? Yeah. Like, like, we know what the country looks like now, but then it was like there's nothing. there was nothing. Yeah. The wilderness, you know, <laughs> New Jersey. You go, it, you go into New Jersey, New York State. I mean, they just a few years earlier, Washington was to the French and, uh, and Indian Wars that was uh, going on before the Revolution. I mean, it is not something that is taken lightly. But could you imagine? Yeah. I I can't. It'd be tough. So these guys just went and they he took with them they was he worked for an orchard and he took those skills with them looking for for opportunity not to basically start his own orchard but to start orchards for others. So say to say somebody knock on your door, "Hey, Julio, would you like to have an orchard? This is a great spot. We do this. I'll help you get it started. We'll get it planted. We'll make sure that the deer don't eat it. Um what do you think?" Yeah. And that's and that's what he would do. And that he would get that started. He would make money from that. Mm -hmm. um, and that he didn't plant like apples back then, although he did create delicious apples and golden delicious, but they weren't necessarily for eating. Yeah. Good old Americans. Yeah. It was to drink, drink. to get drunk, <laughs> <laughs> to make cider, basically, <laughs> and Applejack. And, and, that, <laughs> and what's ironic about that? Is that again? That the, there's pictures in storybooks about Johnny Appleseed, where you know he looks like a guy that he has a pot on his head and he's got like <laughs> you know raggedy clothes and things like that. And but he was actually part of a church that's denomination. It was the Church of Swedenborg, also known as the New Church, and it was a Christian denomination that basically he wouldn't. Her harm, like in, in the, and it was the doctrine of the church forbade its members from harming any of God's creatures. Hmm. So, Chapman Johnny Appleseed became a animal rights activist, a vegetarian. Um, he he just, you know, he was a nut. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really. It was hey, I, I admire it, but that helped him get through like Indian territory. The Indians like thought that he was a spiritualist, that he actually had um, this power and that they let him be. Hmm. Even mosquitoes or rag, <laughs> even rattlesnakes, <laughs> probably uh, gnats, uh, fungus yeah, gnats, fungus gnats <laughs> <fungus nets>, and, <laughs> yeah. and fruit flies he left yeah. alone. Yeah. <laughs> and that it, the life of religion is to do good. And that was, hey, we need more of those people. So, and he led this nomadic lifestyle, planting orchards as he went. And he, and he thought, he combined that, that it was his path to salvation. And basically he, he, he tried to make it so that when he went to judgment day, there would be less things for God to judge him on. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, all right, John, remember that mosquito? Yes. 
it yeah. died. <laughs> you it brushed died. it away, but you <laughs> killed it. Uh, God, I hope that you're not that specific because I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I saw a lot of insecticides. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, so he, he his occupation was basically a nurseryman. Um, and it, it's just a great story that I think kids kids like and they should be should be told about that that how this man went to the wilderness and went through and found people that were on the frontier at that time and helped them to build basically <laughs> orchards and a almost free i mean he would do odd jobs and things just to keep himself going but it was a combination of his faith and his determination and knowledge of orchards and apples that made it possible. Right. So, interesting guy. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy, <laughs> birthday, Happy birthday, Johnny, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny. We'll be Thank right you. back right after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Julio. Lots to learn today. Oh, yeah. Lots that's, to learn. That's some more nets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, again, I, I wonder if that denomination from Johnny Appleseed is still around. Uh, maybe. Maybe? Yeah. Well, that's where all the vegetarians are coming from. <laughs> is that what vegetarians are vegans. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. understand which is which. <laughs> and look, wow. it, we've had an extremely dry oh, patch gosh. the last month um, from August on. September has been extremely dry. I can see it in my plants. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you're putting your plants to bed right. Yeah. Uh, you need to get them watered and, and get them basically fed and everything because next year this drought will show the damage. Okay. All right. We'll be right here next week. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden. <laughs> 